The fast food industry is worth $331 billion, and it didn't even exist 100 years ago. We have people alive today that are older than that industry. In such a short period of time, there has essentially been a fast food revolution, each decade standing on the shoulders of the last. Sliders lead to chicken sandwiches, chicken sandwiches lead to whatever this is. Maybe at this point, fast food has regressed? You see, a lot of people would say that fast food has gotten better and better, but is it at its peak of what we have available to us? The real question is, have we made everything that could possibly be made? Which is why today we are going through history to make, taste, and rank 100 years of fast food. All right, let's kick things off in 1902. The first demand for fast food in America ever was created by something called the Automat, which arrived from Germany. That sounds about right. Food was prepared and replaced quickly for self-service through little coin-operated slots. Horn and hard fart, or hard whatever, was the first Automat, and the mac and cheese earned the most coins. It was a very weird recipe, I will say that. You have cooked noodles, a bechamel, that's right, a bechamel, not a Mornay, just a plain bechamel, Worcestershire sauce, and then you add huge cubes of cheddar, a lot of it. You toss it together, and then that goes into a casserole and gets baked. They called it the macaroni au gratin and casserole. And if you're guessing if that looks good, it doesn't. Now on to the tastings. For the items that cannot be acquired today, we'll be eating what we make. If it's available today, we'll eat it from the restaurant. Each one will be ranked from one to 10 on a scale of inventiveness. Starting with this one. So this is the original recipe for the thing. This is what I would imagine mac and cheese served in hell would be like. It's like mac and cheese if the pasta was sandpaper. This is the first mac and cheese I've had where the cheese is actually separated from the mac. The flavor is not bad. I will say it tastes pretty good. The texture is revolting. It makes sense that this was popular during the Great Depression because yeah. it made me depressed. This caused the Great Depression. You might be right. Don't fact check that. It's a pretty big innovation. If this never existed before, it's a pretty big deal, even though it was Yeah. You know, of course the first version of many things are I'll give it an innovation score of a six just because it's brand new and it's not really improving upon anything. It is the thing. I agree with the six. Yeah. Oh my God, look at you. So beautiful. I've never seen anything like this. So worth every dollar I could have possibly spent. Mwah. Go get the book. It's a good time. The link's in the description. Texture over taste. Moving on to the 1920s and a major milestone, White Castle, founded in 1921. It's widely considered the first fast food chain. Despite me not loving it now, it smells like poop. Maybe it was great back then. So you're gonna take a real small little slider patty, sear that on a flat top or pan, season with salt and pepper to taste, get a nice sear on it, flip, and add a little tiny piece of cheese. By the way, this is the way that it was made in 1921. They didn't do the whole steaming and all that stuff until the 1940s. Now you're gonna add a little bit of grilled onion on top of that, then you get your little slider bun, patty goes down, add pickles, tomato, lettuce, and crown it. This looks better than the original White Castle. Maybe it is better. This is a toddler's burger. Looks pretty good. I wish they still made it like this. I feel like White Castle just stopped innovating after making this. White Castle introduced centralized bakeries and basically general production of anything on their menu. It was said at one point that the only thing that White Castle didn't do was raise the cow and grow the wheat themselves. Big ups, everybody loves a hamburger. This is the kickstart to probably one of the most important foods in American history. As far as fast bites and fast production, I think that's about an eight. I will also agree that it's an eight. Let me give it a seven. So we're gonna settle at a 7.5. Thank you, White Castle. Fast food got better from the previous decade because of you moving on. On to the 1930s when the Colonel himself, no, not me, I'm not the Colonel, okay? Just stop it. Harlan Sanders started pan frying and selling KFC. His biggest innovation was his secret 11 herbs and spices. And nine years later, he switched from pan frying to pressure cooking and inevitably deep frying. That's what made KFC fast. Obviously, nobody knows the secret recipe, but I know a recipe that beat theirs. And that is my KFC meal, but better recipe, which we're picking up as we dredge our chicken in its flour mixture with my 11 herbs and spices. The ingredients and method is in my recipe, which is in the link in the description. And now we pan fry in a cast iron skillet. Yes, the old school way. Turning and flipping the chicken until beautifully deep fried and cooked through. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Is that from KFC? Is that a KFC slogan? No. Oh, yeah. The way that they did it with the seasonings and the 11 herbs and spices set such a foundation for what fried chicken is today. They went from like a really fast, hot service item to something that technically takes more time and is more difficult to produce. And it tastes pretty good. I've never loved KFC that much. I don't think it's that great, but... But in the 1930s... But for the 1930s, that would be hitting. To take something that takes 25 minutes to a half hour to cook and be able to make that a serviceable item and still have a great depth of flavor is an improvement. I'm going to give KFC a whopping nine on the innovation scale. I'm just gonna give it a seven and a half. I'm gonna go an eight. We'll average it out. Innovation scale of an eight. Great work, KFC. On to the 40s. 
Next up, the 1940s, McDonald's made maybe the biggest change ever. Starting in 1949, they replaced potato chips with french fries, which they actually cooked in beef fat back then. What happened to those days, huh? They ended this recipe in 1990 and replaced the tallow with canola, blend oil with beef flavoring. <sighs> Well, we're gonna make it the OG way, which is very similar to the recipe that's in my cookbook, Texture Over Taste. If you don't have a copy, the link's in the description. I love you so much. But we're picking that up with the second fry. Yes, they get fried twice. They've been poached, par-fried, and frozen. Now we do our final fry in hot beef fat until beautifully golden, crispy, crunchy, stunning, mouth-watering, chancla-throwing level delicious. We season it with salt generously, and we taste. Everybody who ate the KFC and they were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then they ate this and they were like, good Lord. I can just drive up somewhere and get this. I'm kind of on the opposite point of this. Fries already existed. McDonald's just made it fast. To be in the 30s and have fast food, probably just as good as being in the 40s. For me, it's a major improvement. Before this, restaurants were making chips. Can you imagine going to McDonald's, ordering a quarter pounder and getting a side of chips with it? How common were French fries back then? I don't know that they were that common. Considering the number one staple at a fast food restaurant is a side of fries, I feel like it's a pretty big jump, but the level of ingenious, maybe not huge. Yeah. I need to stop mm -hmm. eating this. Although minor, I would say it's an improvement. I'm gonna give it a seven. I'm gonna give it a seven too. I love french fries, makes me happy. I'm also going to give it a seven. Seven for the <coughs> Moving on. On to the 1950s. A little Florida chain called Burger King introduced a quarter pound version of their flame broil burgers in 1957. They called it the Whopper. That's right. It cost fewer than 40 cents back then, which honestly, if you pay more than that today, you're probably paying too much considering what you get. But that's another story. But what the f is flame broiled? From a restaurant perspective, I don't know what they mean by that. Is it actually on a broiler? Oh, it actually is. Literally a conveyor belt broiler. We don't have one, so we decided to cook our patty on a charcoal grill for that flame broiled flavor. It's really about the beef fat popping on the hot heat and smoking and scenting the meat with its own hot fat. Kind of a beautiful thing. Now we have our patty seasoned with salt and pepper, searing it on both sides until cooked through. A little bit of American cheese to melt. And then the patty goes on a seeded bun, specifically a large one. We sauce our top bun with mayo. And then we add pickles, ketchup, onions, tomatoes, and lettuce. Crown our king and we have essentially an older school, but not too different from new school, Whopper. Not that much better than the slider, but what I love about it is you get a full meal here. Slider's just like a little boy burger. This is a man-sized burger. I feel like I had the opportunity to actually enjoy that compared to the slider. Did this push the industry forward enough to be the most impactful thing? This is just a big slider. I'm gonna give it a four. Give it like a three. I'll give it a three. It's a three and a half on the innovation scale. So we're gonna say didn't improve from the past decade. Moving on. Next up, the swinging 60s. What does that mean? What do they mean by that? When Glenn Bell opened Taco Bell and helped popularize that hard shell taco he had first tried at nearby Mexican restaurants, his customers first called them pay Goes. This is according to the Taco Bell website. So here's how they do it. You cook down some ground beef, get it nice and fine, season it with whatever their taco seasoning is. Add your seasoned beef to a taco shell, followed by sour cream, lettuce, diced tomato, and cold shredded cheese. I've always hated that they did it this way. The cheese stays cold and I don't understand why. Now we taste. I grew up in a town with not a lot of culture. This was my idea of Mexican food till I was probably <laughs> 16. It tastes good, but it's built for when you're under the influence. Taco Bell is best enjoyed at two in the morning. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't feel that innovative to me. But what do you think this was like in the 60s? Taco! Tacos! Historically, Taco Bell did popularize a version of Mexican food. Maybe this was really revolutionary for them. Did this become better in the previous year? I mean, I guess yes, because there was a new thing. So we'll give it a score of four. Moving on. On to the 1970s, the Arby's Roast Beef Sandwich. I don't know how they're doing now, but they were selling like crazy back then, supposedly. But not like their burger competitors. How do you boost your beef sandwich? 1978 rolled around and they created something special, the Beef and Cheddar Sandwich. Somehow the sandwiches today look like they were actually cooked and assembled in 1978. So there you go. So we get our bun, Arby sauce goes down, a thick layer of your roast beef on top, drizzle with cheese sauce, and then you crown your king. It's a simple sandwich. I do like beauty and simplicity, so let's taste. I mean, this looks a lot like school lunch. That's all I have to say about it. This feels like it would have been invented in 1910, but somehow just got invented in 1970. This did everything for Arby's, but nothing for fast food. What was going on in the 70s that they were like, this is what the people need? It's just a roast beef sandwich. Even with the perspective of where we're at now in fast food, this wasn't inventive for the time, I don't think. I'm gonna give it an inventiveness score of two. I'm gonna agree with a two. I'm gonna go three, just because of what it did for Arby's. Locking in an inventive scale at 2.5. Was this better than the previous year though? I'd be happier with this than a hard shell taco. So 
same. I'll let you guys have the majority on that. I don't think I'd be happy with this any day. Slightly of better than the previous decade. Moving on. Ah, the 80s. McDonald's introduces arguably one of the most iconic fast food items in the world, the McNugget. Funny enough, the whole point was to try and convince Americans that they were better for you than beef. The cool thing is chicken nuggets were supposedly first invented by a food scientist in the 1950s, but they never took off until McDonald's did it like this. So shout out to McDonald's. We can figure out the pink goo in their breading looking like some sort of secret thing. So I'm using my butt better McNugget recipe. Picking it up as we dip our shaped nuggets into a thin batter, followed by a flour mixture, and finally into a tempura style batter. This is very similar to how they do it in the factory. It's sort of like a three tier process. We then immediately deep fry till golden brown delicious, GBD, and immediately season with salt. Now we taste. You know, I've always hated the McNugget, but a chicken nugget is a special thing. This is super revolutionary for the time. You had that fried chicken from the 30s, and now it's been turned into this really small bite-sized thing. I think you can't get any more fast food than what this is. To me, it's an inventiveness of like seven. Because of the importance of the chicken nugget, I will give it a six and a half. I'm gonna give it a score of seven. An inventiveness score of seven, but was this better than the previous decade? Yes. yes. Yeah, literally a foot would be a step up from the RB sandwich. Moving on. Finally into a decade that I was born, the 90s. Going back into our childhood today, one of the most unique inventions in fast food, the Pizza Hut stuffed crust pizza. I mean, it's literally just a pizza dough and then they put cheese sticks around the entire outside of the edge, folded it and baked it as usual. It's not that big of a jump, but I feel like in the 90s, food was kind of the same across the board. So the second you have cheese in the crust, people were like, whoa, we're in the future, brother. And I respect that. I remember feeling that way. But does it really withstand the test of time? Let's find out. It's a lot of bread. It's almost like a mozzarella stick type beat at the back, and then you have the pizza at the front. This is probably the point in time where fast food started to go wrong. It was like, let's just put things in other things and not make new things. It's inventive, but I don't think this was the step in the right direction. I completely disagree. I'm old enough to remember when this was introduced, and it blew my mind. And I still love stuffed crust pizza because of that like nostalgia factor. I don't think it's that inventive. I think it tastes okay. Is it better than the previous generation of chicken nugget edition? Maybe yes, maybe no. But inventiveness, I'm gonna give it a four. I'd give it a five. I'd give it a six. That gets averaged out at a five. Moving on. Now, hang on, you might be thinking, are the inventions over? Wrong. The 2000s gave us one of the coolest, albeit craziest, true honest inventions that actually stuck. The McDonald's McGriddle. We all know what this is. Somehow McDonald's gets little syrup bombs built into their buns. And thankfully we have our own method to do that. So you sear a sausage patty, I doubt they're searing them fresh. So we're really making them look good here. We got some fresh griddle cakes, which we added, cooked down crystallized maple syrup so that it would melt and turn into buckets of maple syrup. Flipped our griddle cake, cooked them through, and then assembled by melting cheese on the bottom griddle cake, dropped down your sausage, a folded scrambled egg, and crowned our king. This looks beautiful. Let's taste. I'm a big fan. I had a McGriddle this morning. The fact that you used to have pancakes, breakfast sausage, eggs, and now it's all combined into one small sandwich that you can take on the go, I think that's huge for fast food. This is a real invention. A lot of these fast food things were introduced to fast food, but they weren't invented by fast food. This is an invention of fast food that honestly I will say I actually do like when I make it. It's a very simple evolution of what already existed on the market. I still think it's awesome today. I would give this an innovation of nine to nine and a half. Yeah, I'd give it a nine. I'm gonna give it a nine. Total score nine, was it better than the previous year? Hell yes it was. At least they were thinking for this one. Shout out to McDonald's. That puts McGriddle in the lead. It's gonna take a lot to beat this, but we still have a few more. Now into the 2010s. KFC kicked off the decade with the double down. Yeah, I'm just gonna say this one didn't stick, but maybe it ranks well here. So essentially the way it was made was marinated. Chicken going into the 11 herbs and spice dredge. You get a nice craggly crust and it gets deep fried. This can be done with breast or thighs. Now we have two pieces of fried chicken that are boneless to be specific. You take your monstrosity, I mean your chicken. First down goes white American cheese, followed by bacon, spread on some mayo on the other side of the piece of chicken and put the other piece of mayo spreaded chicken on top and there you go. Welcome to hell. It's a massive tendon. Gross. They're like beating the out of your taste buds. They're like, salt, fat, creamy, crunchy. Arr, 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 arr. My thoughts exactly. I want like a good, easy to eat meal on the go in my car. It's not really there anymore. And now you're kind of just in these wacky things. Like, can you eat it? I was in college when this thing came out and I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Jesus Christ, Cam. Tasting it just now, I almost threw up. Better than the previous year? Absolutely not. All these ingredients, all these flavors already existed. They just mashed them together and took the bun away. Inventiveness, that's a one. I'd also say about a one. 2010s were like the beginning of the 
the Age of Excess, and this is like a perfect sum up of that. I'm gonna give it a two just for College Cam. Shout out College Cam. So I think we'll round that down to a 1.5. Moving on to our final contestant, the modern day. How does the modern day size up with 100 years of fast food? Let's find out the loaded nacho cheeseburger from Wendy's. So it's a seared, yes, square patty for whatever reason, seasoned nicely, seared on both sides with a little bit of American cheese on it. You add your cheesy patty to the bottom of a jalapeno cheddar bun. They then add more cheese on top to be specific, a poblano cheese sauce, dredged fried crispy corn kernels, tortilla chips, lettuce, tomato, chipotle sauce on the inside of the top bun, and you crown your, I don't even know if I wanna call this a king. Do you feel like this is something new? Or does this feel like just throwing stuff on a Burger. There's only one way to find out. Oh my God, do not smell it. That's scary. Have you ever gotten too drunk at a football game, ate a ton of nachos and thrown it up? That's what that tastes like. <laughs> Whoa, that is so specific. This tastes like a jar of Tostitos queso that was just microwaved and thrown on here. I wish we could have eaten the one we made. This was a bit difficult to eat. That instantly gave me heartburn. One could easily say that today's world is the golden age of fast food. Undoubtedly, because you have unlimited options all across the globe. And yet they're making things like this. Mm -hmm. Is this gonna be around in the next five years? No. Was it more inventive than the previous year? No, that's a one. It's a one. It's a one. I think we might have stopped being inventive in the world of fast food starting 2010. 2024 is here. Maybe it'll be better this year. Bye.